You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. I just love football. Everything about being here just makes me happy. This is the game that I love. I just want to go out there Friday night and play and compete and give it all I got. Football is back. Everybody on the team likes to hit. We hard knows we like to hit, you know. Just knowing that we're going to be able to hit someone else. Nothing beats the excitement of Friday. We were lucky enough to have the season. We're not going to let it go to a waste. Football is back. I'm just looking forward to being out with the guys, you know, just on those Friday nights where nothing else really matters but football. <laughs> Oh, man, in the words of the Grateful Dead's Jerry Garcia, what a long, strange trip it's been. Uh, we didn't know this month, uh, maybe last week, even days ago for some programs, if we'd make it here tonight. But here we are, and we have football in the state of Indiana. A lot of places with no fans or limited fans in the stands, but that's certainly better than no football at all, right? So let us be your eyes and ears this season here on the Highlight Zone, and Colton Howard kicks off this new year with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week, and it's a good one. Colton. That's right, Glenn. Speaking of eyes and ears, last fall at Homestead, the Spartans heard the ring of the victory bell for the first time, Homestead winning the SAC crown. Meanwhile, Northrop proving it's on the up and up, the Bruins coming off their best season in 13 years. Northrop at Homestead, it's your highlight zone game of the week. To Walter Stadium we go. The defending SAC champs looking to reload after they were hit hard by graduation. And they get off to a good start. Hands the ball off to Braden Hardwick inside the red zone. Hardwick dives into the pylon near the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. That's your first touchdown of 2020. 7-0 to the end of the first quarter. Homestead. To the second quarter we go. Northrop in the red zone. Down a touchdown. Demarius Cowan, a workhorse, slips off some Spartans, crosses the plane. You'll see more from him in just a bit. After the missed PAT, Homestead leads by one. Still in the second quarter, Homestead knocking on the door of their third touchdown. Evan Ormsby keeps it for himself, rushes it into the end zone. 21-6 Spartans. Rounding out the first half, learn his name, Demarius Cowan, again on the carry, gets into the end zone, and Northrop and Homestead go into the first half, tied 21-13, to 13, not tied. Third quarter we go, guess who? Cowan on the carry, he's on the move, breaks free, 38 yards to the end zone. His third touchdown of the game, two-point extra try, no good, and just like that, it's a two-point ball game in the third. To the fourth quarter we go, Northrop down by two still. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Cowan carries it. Somehow, some way, slips out of the Spartans' grip down the sideline and in for his fourth touchdown of the night. 2,276 yards rushing for Cowan, and Northrop wins it 25-21 to on the road. The first time in 17 tries, the Bruin beat the Spartans. Cowan, your mic. I had no idea I was going to pull off what I did. I'm truly happy. I did it all for my father. I did it all for my team. I'm just truly happy right now. It's a good first game because they're the defending conference champions. But as I told our team in the end zone, you know, this can't, I don't want this to be the highlight of our year. We need to keep getting better. And, uh, you know, I referenced in 2018 we beat Carroll and then we came and it came back and lost three in a row and, and we want to keep getting better and that's maturity and, and I think uh, our coaching staff will make sure we coach that really hard and and our guys continue to progress and and you know just take it week by week. Homestead is at Concordia next Friday while Northrop hosts Southside. Glenn back to you. All right thank you very much. A Spooler Stadium Snyder ranked 11th in the state 6A poll. The Panthers hosting Northside Legends 17th in 5A and I've been waiting a while to say this but Deuce is loose. Deuce Taylor to Ronald Collins the third and it's 26 to 7 north side in the second quarter. Later in the second Trent Ryder channeling his inner John Rockle. It's a field goal to cut it to 26 10 but man Mike Rivard's team was in control of this one from the get-go. Deuce hooking up with RC3 again. Deuce Taylor 253 yards from the air. Four touchdowns and then yeah, a little toss to Bronte Johnson. The kid is a freshman. That's a touchdown against the Panthers. And Northside goes on to beat Snyder by 30. 47 to 17. Legends get the win. So for us, a win means a lot. Um, you know, we've been doubted a lot. Uh, we've been talked down. So 
this win is just building our confidence up. And for Northside Schneider, this game was very personal. So it means a lot for us. I mean, it's huge. You know, for the first time in three years, you know, we're not starting the season, you know, 0 1. So this is just huge. You know, the, the one thing I think everybody has been trying to wonder is can we finally beat a Big Four team? And I mean, tonight we, we accomplished that. Oh, yeah. Great win for Mike Brevard and Deuce Taylor and the Legends. Hey, how about this one? At Lures Field, the Knights hosting Carroll. Lures ranked 18th in 2A, Chargers 16th in 6A. That was Jeffrey Becker to Mason Englert in the corner for the touchdown. And the Chargers stake themselves to an early 7 0 lead. Now, you're going to hear this name quite a bit during these highlights. Mason Englert on the punt return. Englert fields it. And Angler just making people miss for Doug Dynan's club. Look at him cut up field for the touchdown. It's 14-0, and you say, we've probably seen all the Mason Angler highlights that you could possibly have tonight. That is untrue, because he saved the best for last right here. Look at Angler. Kyle Lindsay is not going to be happy with the tackling there. And whew, look at the moves from Angler. Carroll goes to Lewis Field and rocks the Knights 48-14, your final here. At Dwenger, the Saints marching into a new season as Dwenger hosting Wayne. The Saints rank fourth in the 5A state poll. First quarter action is Wayne doing it with defense. That's Chris Thomas with the sack. But Bishop Dwenger's offense would start to get things rolling. Jason Garrett and company dialing up the right plays. It's Brendan Lytle, the quarterback with a one-yard touchdown keeper. It's seven zip Saints midway through the first quarter. Later in the first, it's the Saints doing it with D. Watch Colin Vance. Show off the good hands right there, an interception for Dwenger, and that would set up this. Rocco Sioka with the big catch, 39 yards for the touchdown. He's going to be one of your breakout stars on the highlights on this season. You better believe it. He had six catches for a buck 27 and two TDs, 14 zip Dwenger, and then John Michael Fabini throwing the sack lunch your way as the Wayne Generals fall on the road to Bishop Dwenger, 35 to 12. Final stop in the SAC, we're talking Southside Archers announcing uh, earlier this week they're going to retire Super Bowl champ Bernard Pollard's jersey. That's going to be in week four. They open with Concordia, and that's Jalen Lattimore doing his best Bernard Pollard impression. He gets the sack on Brandon Davis there, but we're in the second quarter when the cadets, they go to the bell cow, and I'm talking about my man, Amir Drew. The senior went for 1,300 plus last year on the ground. He shows you why to pick up the first down. Later on the drive, it's good old number seven. And as uh, Colton said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep giving it to Amir Drew. He picks up the first yard, uh, first down there. He's down at the nine yard line. And yeah, they're gonna give it to Drew again for a touchdown here. He had 24 carries, a buck 73 touchdowns for Amir Drew as Concordia looks good in a win over Southside. 37 zip at Jack Weicker Stadium. Well, that is a wrap for the SAC, but we are far from done here in week one. East Noble, as you know, made a run to Lucas Oil Stadium last fall. We're going to head up to Kendallville as the Knights try to rock Plymouth. Columbia City christening its new field, but would they christen it with the win? We have Leo battling Woodland in an Eeks showdown. And how about South Adams? Mm, they're thinking, hey, this could be the year for a state title run. It started with Winchester. We got highlights there, plus trips to West Noble, Huntington North, Bluffton, Norwell, Garrett, Leo, and a whole bunch more next in the zone. night back to the highlight zone well the fans were allowed to pack in at East Noble like they have been in years past especially last season you know that place would be absolutely rocket it was all last season long as the Knights storming their way to the 4A state title game Luke Amsud's team has to replace some key players no doubt but they got a lot of good ones back in Kendallville and we picked this one up in the second quarter Dalton Stinson to Rowan Zolman He's going to be a big name for East Noble this season. That's a great catch in the end zone. It's 14-0 East Noble in the second quarter. Later in the second, Stinson to Nick Munson. Munson, kind of that slot receiver, that West Welkery type. He comes up with the catch here, so shifty, and gets in for the touchdown. It's 21-0 East Noble, and yeah, the Knights basically just picking up where they left off. They do it on offense, they do it on defense. You'll see the fumble here, the Knights recover. Then it's Christian Sanchez booting a field goal. Sanchez, he's got 
smoke on Twitter, this guy, and apparently can kick some field goals as well as East Noble wins it 31 zip. They rock the Rockies of Plymouth. In Columbia City, first game at Eagle Stadium. What better way to break in the new digs than to host a county rival? Eagles hosting Busco. Head coach Brett Fox told me he had four dreams where T.J. Bedwell scored the first touchdown in stadium history. He was right. Dream come true. T.J. Bedwell from Greg Bolt. First touchdown in the new stadium, 7-zip Columbia City. Later, he not only had the first, uh, he had the second, and this one was pretty darn pretty. It's T.J. Bedwell again, 17-0 Columbia City. You're going to see Abe Barrera with a nice pickup here. This would lead to more points for Columbia City. They put up 38 as the Eagles christen the new stadium with a shutout victory, 38-0. Craig Baum Stadium, Warsaw coming off its first ever sectional title. Huntington North entering year two of the Bob Prescott era. They're on the up and up. Third quarter, Warsaw up 34-22. Huntington North, Steve Johnson, that's Bailey Landrum. He's into the red zone, and then later on the drive, Aiden Dennis up the gut for the short score, and the lead, or the deficit, if you're a Vikings fan, cut to 34-28, Warsaw on top. Fourth quarter, Warsaw needs some breathing room. They get it here. It's Aaron Green, the quarterback with the keeper, and he gone. Warsaw with the touchdown here as the Tigers win a good one at Craig Baum, 42-35. The final Huntington North looks much improved. Up at Leo, the Lions coming off a 10-2 season. Both those losses last year came to East Noble. We already told you how good they were last year. They were taking on Woodland was the Purple Pride. That's Woodland's Devin Sinclair and Bo Brooks partnering up with the sack. It was 44-0, Leo in the third. And then this is the final touchdown of the game. Alex Holcomb pouncing on the football and getting into the end zone. Leo was scoring early and often. The Lions open the season with a dominant 50 to zip win over the visiting Woodland Warriors. Up in Garrett, the big train a little bit derailed by the injury bug last season as the Railroaders looking to start strong this year against a good New Haven squad. Jakar Williams, the junior, hits Lane Woodson and Woodson is good son. 80 yards on the strike, New Haven out to an early seven zip lead and they weren't done. That was in the first quarter. This is going to be in the second quarter. Jakar Williams, six foot three junior. The kid can play some hoop. The kid can play some quarterback. He gets the scooting touchdown in right there as New Haven wins by a final of 47 21 against the big train. At Fred Park Field, the beautiful turf in Bluffton. Bluffton coming off a seven and three season. My man, Daddy Kunks and the Tigers hosting a Northfield team ranked ninth in the state in 1A. Northfield showing you why they're getting some of that preseason love in the AP poll. It's Clayton Tomlinson with the interception, and it's 0-0. You know Daddy Coach doesn't like that. First quarter, he wouldn't like this either. It's Northfield's Jared Schaefer with a touchdown. The Norse get on the board first in this one. It's 7-0 Northfield. The bluff is Cody Middlestead. He makes his name as a running back, but he makes the highlights as a DB. It's an interception. The Bluffton defense played well after that as the Tigers go on to win, a, win the game in the opener. 25-13, your final over the Norse. Just up the road from Bluff Vegas, Norwell hosting Jay County at the courtyard. The Knights with one of the stingiest defenses around last year. They would prove it again this evening, but start of the third, the Knights up 28 to zip, make it 35 to zip. That's Max Ringer in about his fourth year as a starter. It's a 35-0 lead on the 12-yard TD. And then we mentioned that Norwell defense gave up like 12 points a game last year. They get to stop there as that Norwell defense pitches a shutout as Josh Gerber's team gets the victory against Jay County, 42 to nothing. Down in Burn, South Adams with state title aspirations this season, you bet. Ranked third in the state in 1A, Grant Mosier, his beard and the Starfires hosting visiting Winchester first quarter, Christian Somerset with a rushing touchdown to make it 7-0 South Adams. South Adams really more known for the air attack, and James Arnold shows you why. Yeah, Drew Stutzman could have caught it, but it was Aiden Warner, the junior, with the touchdown catch there to make it 14-0. And then it's Arnold swinging it out to a wide open, wide open Drew Stutzman. South Adams picks up where they left off another good day for the offense. 41-8, South Adams victorious. County rivals going head to head up in Ligonier, Central Noble and the West Noble Chargers. The Chargers coming off an undefeated regular season last year. West Noble here 
Picked off though, Preston Diffendorfer with the nice play up high for the Cougars. And then it's Will Hoover on the touchdown run as Hayden Kilgore's Cougars up seven to zero on rival West Noble. West Noble punches back. You knew they would. It's Colby Knox to David Stone. Watch the spin and in. Mm, it's beautiful right there. It's tied at seven. But you're going to see Sawyer Yoder break off an 80-yard touchdown run. Hayden Kilgore, his first game as the head coach of Central Noble, at 24 years old, the youngest head coach in the state of Indiana, and he wins his debut as Central Noble rocks county rival West Noble 27-14. Good for Hayden Kilgore and the Cougs. At the Swamp, the Ryan O'Shea era getting underway as Lakeland hosting Wawasee. And in the first quarter, it was Wawasee taking to the air. Parker Young to Keaton Salazar. That's a 50-yard gain. And then you're going to see Parker Young do the rest himself. The quarterback in for six. And Wawasee takes an early 7-0 lead. In the second quarter, it's Young slinging it to Jacob Meek, and the Meek shall inherit the touchdown. Wawasee, a winner in the Swamp, 42 zip the final. Out in Death Valley, Steve Moriarty and the Vikings hosting Culver Academy. And this one, well, it was Culver Academy doing it with their QB, Jimmy Pisani to Jason Mall. That's a big gain right there for a touchdown. 50 yards on the pitch and catch, six zip Culver. Culver would go for two, and they would get it. It's going to be Pisani to Cooper Farrell. 8-0 Culver. They tack on another as Culver wins in Death Valley by a final of 16-0. Up at Angola, the Hornets hosting the cap. Thanks to our buddies at Hometown Media for the broadcast. If there are more people broadcasting their games, we love it, and we love this. At least if you're an Angola fan, you do. Tucker Hasselman on the touchdown in the first quarter. 7-0 Angola. Second quarter, how about some more Hasselman yeah. action? It's a touchdown for the Hornets. They scored touchdown. early, they scored often, as Angola opens the season with a 55-18 win over the visiting Barons. Our final stop at Eastside, the Blazers ranked 12th in the state in 2A. Todd Mason and company hosting Heritage. Casey Coltman's debut with the Patriots. And we picked this one up in the early going. It's already 7-0 Eastside. Laban Davis to Dylan Breedemeyer. And yeah, he's gone for 41 yards. Laban Davis, three touchdown passes, 157 yards in the air, 100 rushing yards. This is Gage Pritchard for Heritage getting the Patriots on the board. But it was Eastside's night. 49-7, the Blazers victorious. We got more highlight zone, including your first gem of the night here in 2020, next after the break. We're the Columbia City Eagles, and welcome back to the Highlight Zone. Back with some football, and welcome to the Highlight Zone. Well, it's the play that shines so bright, we call it the gem of the night. For the second year in a row, our friends at Peter Franklin Jewelers sponsoring this show, and without them, we couldn't make this happen on Friday nights. And man, are we glad to have something to look forward to this year. Hmm, 2020 has been a rough one. Hey, with that, we present you with your week one gem of the night, and the honor goes to Northrop's Demarius Cowan. Watch how many tackles he breaks here. Three right there, and then... Breaks this one to get into the end zone. This was the go-ahead score for the Bruins in the fourth quarter, and it would end up being the game winner. Watch the broken tackles right there as Demarius Cowan and the Bruins take down reigning SAC champ Homestead in week one. That is your Peter Franklin Jewelers gem of the night. Congrats to Jason Dorfler and company. Key games for next week. How about Dwenger and Northside? That now looms large as far as the SAC title chase goes, and it's only week two. You got Snyder at Carroll. Homestead is at Concordia. Leo travels up to Angola, who looked pretty darn good tonight. Both of those teams did, as a matter of fact, while Eastside will battle Adams Central. That'll do it for our week one edition of the Highlight Zone. For Colton, I'm Glenn, and we'll see you next Friday and all season long.